What's going on guys? Welcome to the kitchen episode. All right, don't sit on the stove. I think I started a fire. Welcome to the kitchen episode. We moved in about three weeks ago and we've been extremely busy. Jokes aside, we actually have really been busy with getting the house next door all prepped and painted for rentals. We're trying to get that rented uh, still. And then moving in and getting everything hung, getting all your spaces finalized so that they're exactly how you imagined took an extremely long time. We have a whole bunch of videos showing that, so take a look at the videos to come. Here's just a few little previews. Now that we got that out of the way, I really miss seeing that intro. <sighs> In this video, we'll take a look at a few things. We'll take a look at the kitchen and how it was designed. So Isa's gonna run us through the actual design process or her kind of inspiration. She is the mastermind behind how this all looks. And then we'll take a look at how we actually put that into action. So selecting the materials, designing the uh, IKEA kitchen, spoiler, and uh, then choosing the door panels from a company called Swedish Doors, and then seeing the trades do the installation of uh, kind of the cabinets and the floors. As with every new design, I start with a Pinterest board um, and pin the ideas that I love that will suit the new project the most and narrow it down with a few aesthetics and a few gestures. So what we were trying to accomplish for this kitchen was uh, a classic but modern look. I think I started with the flooring option which was a beautiful herringbone um, I, it was stone, but it might have been slate, so it was black slate herringbone. And I knew I wanted to start with that foundation. With that, it kind of gave us a foundation of the look we wanted for the rest. The thing that struck me the most uh, was to have a more obvious lower cabinet with a, uh, a type of wood. I think the ones that I preferred were possibly walnut. Here we don't have upper cabinets, but I was really inspired by this aesthetic. So we needed one wall of upper cabinets and we made them disappear into the wall. So basically like this. The other kitchen was this one, very similar again. So when I have a few kitchens that are similar and I, I know it's, it's the best direction to take because I've really solidified it in my choice. The next step is to locate real life materials that will suit our house and our budget. These images that I look for obviously are always very expensive kitchens and we have to find something that is comparable but essentially cheap. <laughs> so as I said we started with the floor and we actually found a great um, slate tile. It didn't end up being in herringbone pattern because some installers that we were talking to said it was too complicated and it was going to be more expensive. So we found this beautiful pattern that I loved anyway. I found the backsplash last, but it was, it was really difficult with the choices we had because like you've seen in the picture, it had to be something high quality and mainly a stone or nothing else because ceramic didn't really cut it. Um, I didn't like all the joints. I didn't like that it was a printed pattern. So we were very lucky to find this 
beautiful marble that was a relatively good price and I find was the perfect puzzle piece to pull our whole kitchen together and have that intemporal, luxurious look. So with that we went with um, just a white countertop. I think it brought all the elements together and really kept the floor and the um, base cabinets as a main feature and as a gradient everything goes and disappears into white because the top cabinets disappear into the wall. Other than that, we kept the hardware sleek and black to go as a theme with the rest of the house. The island light fixture uh, follow, falls into those lines of just being a sleek, linear, uh, modern light fixture. So we decided to go with a waterfall countertop. One regret I do have is that I wish we had it seamless. It was a bit more money to have the edges mitered, so we decided to have a butt joint. And I think for the price difference, I would recommend having a seamless for your home if you decide doing that. Because every time I look at it, I love it, but I wish it was seamless. Perfect. Now that Isa has the color scheme and inspiration all figured out, we have to figure out how to actually turn that into a real kitchen that we can build, that we can afford, and that we like based on the inspiration stuff. And how do you do that? Da -da -da -da. You choose an IKEA kitchen. But wait, there's more! The key to this kitchen was this place called Swedish Doors. They create custom doors and faces for IKEA cabinetry. And let's set one thing straight here. I don't know why there's so much flack on IKEA kitchens online as they're cheap and they fall apart. I've done a lot of research and I've never used one in the past, so I guess I'll tell you in a few years, but the IKEA cabinets are built out of three quarter inch material, which is more than what most uh, big box store cabinets are made of. They have a really good fastening system, so a lot of people actually prefer hanging them because it's very intuitive like the rest of their stuff. One thing that's not intuitive is the IKEA kitchen planner. We had to measure out the empty space and when you're making the shop drawings for your actual kitchen you want exact dimensions. The drawings we have for the house are fairly accurate to position the kitchen but the shop drawings are done after once everything's built and we have the exact measurements and we know what will fit whether you know if something moved an inch or two during construction, we want to take care of this now. So we remeasure, and then we bring those measurements inside the IKEA kitchen planner. Now, look at this thing here. There is every single cabinet you can think of that IKEA carries. And I suppose one of the downsides to IKEA is that you have to work within some pretty tight restraints of the size of cabinets they carry. This isn't some multi-million dollar house where we needed this super lavish custom kitchen. I think we finished with something pretty darn close, but we, uh, we got there through uh, using savings like this, which is much cheaper than getting them custom built. In the uh, kitchen planner, we have to choose all the cabinets, put them together, and try to come up with a kitchen solution that actually works for us. This was kind of a headache. We weren't too concerned about the colors and stuff here. We're actually just trying to plan out the cabinets. Yeah, I'm in the dining room, by the way. It's right beside the kitchen. The place isn't that big, and it's just one big open space. You take the IKEA kitchen planner plan, you print that off, and you bring it to uh, Swedish doors. What they do is that they take off all the doors, all the toe kicks, uh, all the side panels, etc., from your order and they keep the cabinets only. You take that cabinet order and you go to Ikea and you order that and you have that shipped to your house. So what we did, we had a whole bunch of boxes. Throughout the whole process, we tried to stick to Isa's original concept. So at Swedish Doors, we looked at all the materials they had to offer. In our opinion, they have a nicer material selection than Ikea. They carry kind of variety of nicer woods, and we chose the walnut for the bottoms. For the tops, we went with this really nice white that's 
uh, mat and essentially that's meant to kind of blend into the top of the wall. Another huge benefit to the Swedish doors is that they can do custom side panels for your fridge. You can see here they did a 1.5 inch side panels and then a top and a bottom panel for the top cabinet and that just kind of continues the flow of the materials that we wanted from the bottom and then that wraps around the fridge and the rest of the stuff above is white. In between those two processes, in order to choose the rest of our materials and to make sure that the space felt right for us, I took all this IKEA information and I brought it into a program I used called SketchUp. I modeled the entire kitchen with the house and then I did some realistic visualizations or renderings as some might call them so that we can see exactly what the house looked like. This was a helpful tool because it looks way more realistic than the IKEA kitchen planner. It helped us uh, integrate some of the custom aspects that we were getting done at Swedish Doors, and then we could you know, customize some options, play around with uh, some configurations of how we wanted the side panels, or you know, the height we wanted certain things, or the bulkhead, or the uh, you know, waterfall island. And that helped us decide everything we needed to finalize our order with Swedish Doors. There were a few little hiccups in the actual delivery of the doors. They took much longer than uh, they said, and then when they were shipped, some of the doors were kind of dinged and dented, but uh, they were kind enough to take those back, get them fixed, and then we had to wait the whole kind of few more weeks to get them shipped, and then one of the doors was damaged in shipping. But that eventually all got settled. That would be my only criticism other than that they delivered a great product that looks really high-end like you can see here. Last but not least, we had to get these cabinets and doors and everything installed. A connection of ours recommended this guy called David Galliote. He had installed one of the kitchens that Isa and I had designed in the past for some clients and uh, they said nothing but good things about him so him and his wife came over here and installed this in a matter of days and they were phenomenal to work with. They were some of the most professional people we've hired to work in this house. The kitchen turned out great, or that the cabinets they took care of. After that we got a pretty good deal on these uh, quartz countertop. We went with white countertops as you can see here with the waterfall edge, so that's the actual piece on the side that wraps the actual island. It makes it look nice and modern. Those guys were actually great to work with as well. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'll link it uh, right here. Following that, we had to go buy all the appliances. In this kitchen, everything is fairly standard size. We have a 36 inch counter depth Fridge. Hey, welcome to Cribs. What's in my fridge? Got protein shakes. I think this is where the magic happens. We got a really, really great deal on this uh, gas stove, which is a GE cafe. It was like some sort of Lowe's clearance item. Uh, and we got it for more than half price. So we we're super happy about that. And then the dishwasher down here. This is a Bosch unit. Again, we have the faucet over here which we got from Costco Canada. Same with the sink. It's a nice thick steel gauge sink. It's a single bowl so that you can have room for a whole bunch of crap. Finally, for the appliances, we have the uh, range hood right here, which I actually bought off Amazon for like 300 bucks. It's been great so far. It's an Agua, which is actually made in Canada, and that's why I bought it. And if you're wondering where the microwave is, it's actually down here in the island. Us old people have to bend down and actually open the door here, but it, it's in the island, it's hidden, it's how we like it. And then obviously we have things like Isa mentioned earlier, light fixtures. Again, we went with black to keep the theme. As Isa said, she chose them, they look great. There's a lot of light bulbs, so keep that in mind. And one last thing, the backsplash. Again, this was inspired by our original uh, Pinterest boards that were kind of seminal for the design. Isa chose this 
uh, at uh, Olympia Flooring. They're the ones who helped us out for the uh, shower when we got uh, our little tile issue. And we had this installed by a guy called George Baresi. Top of the line work, we're super happy to have found him. So the whole tile debacle from upstairs is a little bit of a blessing in disguise because now we found a great tile guy that we trust and we'd like to work with in the future. So as you can see here, we chose this 12 by 24 marble tile. This had to be sealed, but uh, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It has that kind of gray tone and this nice veining, and then that goes all the way around and in the back of the uh, range hood. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell at the bottom. In the next video, we'll be covering the cost of this entire kitchen.